Hi, I'm Andy Webb from BeCleverWithYourCash.com and in this video I'm going to talk to you about how to sell your mobile phone. So if you're just upgrading your phone or thinking of doing it, then you're probably going to have one of these just sitting around. You might even have them from years gone past at the back of a drawer, that spare mobile, which well, you never use it, but it's there just in case. Well, the best thing you can do with any phone that you're not using anymore is to sell it. Now, the most you're going to get for a handset is one that is relatively new. So if you are upgrading after just a year, then your handset could be worth a decent amount of cash. But don't let that put you off if it's a two years, three years, four years old. You could still, if you've got an iPhone or a Samsung, a real high-end handset, you could easily get a couple of hundred, if not more, for that old phone. And even the really old ones, that Nokia that might be knocking around, well, yeah, again, you might be able to get some cash for it as well. So what I'm going to take you through in this video, some of the things you need to do before you sell, some of the places you can sell it, and an idea of how much money you might possibly make if you do this. So let's talk about, first of all, the things you need to do before you sell that old phone. Well, you want to make sure it's in the best condition it possibly can be. Now, I always put my phone in a case and I put a screen protector on the front as well. So if I do go and sell my phone, there shouldn't be any marks and it shouldn't be any scratches, shouldn't be anything broken. You know, you can't avoid it completely. You do sometimes get the odd little chip here or there but as close to pristine as it can be, then you're gonna get more money for it. Now, in some ways you sell it, and I'll tell you about those in a moment, the more accessories you have, again, the more money you'll get. So, have you got the box still? Have you got the plug and the cables? Now, when I buy a new phone, as soon as I get it, again, apart from putting the case and the screen protector on, I package away the box. I don't use the headphones or the earbuds that come with it. I've got other ones that I use, ones that I prefer to use anyway. I don't use that plug. I don't use that cable because I've got them spares from other times. So everything is in that box wrapped away and it's tucked away for a year, two years, three years, however long it is that I keep my phone for because the more you can do to make it feel like it's a brand new experience when someone buys it off you, the more money again that you're going to get. Now something you really want to do to get the most money for your phone is to unlock it. This means, if you're not sure what locking means, is that when you buy a phone, if you bought it from a network, it's going to be kind of stuck on that network that only can be used with those guys. So if you bought your phone, let's say from O2 as part of a contract, there's a very, 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 very good chance that your phone can only be used by O2. Same with all the networks. They all do this, okay? It's their way of trying to make you stick with them. But pretty much every handset can be unlocked. Now there might be requirements about how long you have to have had the phone before you can unlock it. Uh, there might be a cost to get it unlocked, but for most people, most of the time, you can get that phone unlocked for free. And when you unlock it, it means anyone can buy it, doesn't matter who they're with. It's also a really good thing to do if you wanna switch your network just generally, because you can save prices by moving to different places. If it's unlocked, then that helps as well. So do that, there's a really good resource on the gift gaff a website called the Unlockopedia. I'll share that in the show notes so you can head over there and see what you have to do with your handset to get it unlocked if it's not already unlocked. If you bought it outright from Apple or Curry's or wherever it might be, uh, then it will be unlocked anyway. Now, the one final thing you need to do before you sell anything, well, before you post it off, is to wipe all that data. Okay, make sure it is factory reset because you don't want to send it off to someone who's bought your phone to find that they get access to all your information, all your data. Uh, different handsets have different ways of doing this. I know that if you have an iPhone, you also have to uh, disable all the iCloud settings because that prevents uh, the reset happening. Uh, but make sure that you don't send off the phone that you sold to anyone uh, with any of your important information on there. Okay, so then how do you sell it then? If you, if you sell the phone, how do you get this money for it? Well, there are a few ways of doing it. I'm sure a lot of people know already about taking it into one of the mobile phone shops and they might give you some cash for it there. And then I did that years and years and years ago uh, with O2. It was a pretty all right service back then. It wasn't too much of a problem, got a decent price. Uh, but you're not necessarily going to get the best price doing that. Now, to work out exactly where the best price is, there are some tools to help you. And these are comparison sites. As you'd expect with any comparison site, you type in what it is you're after, or in this case, what you're selling, and it will give you a list of different companies who will give you a certain amount of money for it. And it tell you how much, in the first instance, they're willing to pay. Now, this might change, okay? That top level price that you see might not be what you get. And that's because that's if it's in perfect condition, or at least what they say that price is for. And it might be at almost perfect, if not perfect. Now, you send that phone off to them and they might go, 
Well, actually, no, that's not what we thought it was going to be. We're going to give you less money. Okay, so there is that risk using these sites that you don't get as much money as you thought you were going to. And then, well, you don't have to accept it. You can you know, have it sent back to you, but you might have to pay for that return postage. And of course, talking of postage with a lot of these websites, you will have to you know, send it off and it might not come with insurance. So let's say it gets lost or damaged in the post. Well, if you haven't got the insurance, that's not great. So the, then there might be an extra cost you want to consider to get some insurance to cover it when you send it off. Now, some of these websites are those retailers with high street presences as well. So you can always potentially take it in and get a valuation there and then, or hand it over to them and they'll post it off to the team. So that might be a safer option, but have a look at all the options you've got in front of you. Check the reviews. You know, there are websites out there which will kind of give you an idea of customer satisfaction. If anyone's moaning about the service they get or the price is dropping, don't use them. Go for people who have got a good reputation. And I'll link to some of those comparison sites. There's Sell My Mobile, there's Compare My Mobile, there's a few others. Again, I'll link to them so you can find the best ones for you. And that might be the easiest way to get rid of your old phone. And for a lot of you, that might be what you want to do. But if you want a bit more cash, then I've got a couple of other options for you to consider. And this isn't going to guarantee this next one that it is worth more money, but sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But don't forget, you've got places like CEX on the high street. Now, you can actually go to their website and get an idea of the price they're willing to give you for your phone hands. In fact, lots of different technology they'll buy off you as well as CDs and DVDs. Uh, have a look at the prices on there. You'll notice they'll tell you grade A, grade B, grade C, things like that. That's the quality of the, the phone. Um, a is the top level. That could be essentially box perfect. So you might struggle to get that. So I would have that kind of, you know, great if you can, but have a look at that B price is perhaps a more realistic one. But there's no harm again. You can go into a shop. They can tell you what they think about it. You don't have to take it. You can go with one of those mail order ones instead. But for me, when I sell a phone, what I like to do is I like to put it on eBay, okay? We all know about eBay. It can be a bit of a faff, of course it can. But every time I've done this, I've got a lot more money for my phone than I would have done taking it into a shop or selling it uh, via one of those you know, recycling sites. Now, you've got a couple of options, obviously, with eBay. You can put it as an auction. Uh, and potentially with an auction, you could get a much higher price than anyone else, particularly if what you've got is in demand. Uh, or you can do buy it now. That's what I generally do, a buy it now price. This is what I want. Maybe I'll accept offers, but not too much under the price I'm asking for. Uh, I'll always set a reserve, whichever format I was doing it in, because I don't want to sell it uh, for far less than what is on those recycling sites. Something to bear in mind with eBay is you have to factor in, obviously, uh, postage costs and make sure you've got the right one on there, including all the insurance value you want to have before you list it. And also, you've got fees to come out, not just from eBay, but also from PayPal. There are calculators online which will give you an idea of how much it will work out as, uh, and that can significantly reduce your, your take-home money from it. But every time I've done it, it has been more money overall. So for example, when I sold a phone, uh, a one-year-old iPhone 5C, okay, going back a few years now, I got uh, 200 pounds more I've got 360 quid in total, but that was 200 quid more than what I was offered uh, from the general sort of recycling sites at the time. But that's not the only thing you can do. And I have sold my phone in other ways as well. And the last time I upgraded my phone, which was two years ago now, I had an iPhone 6 uh, and that was a three year old phone. I'd kept it for a decent amount of time. It was three years old and uh, I put it on eBay. I listed it at 260 quid. So still a decent price for a phone that's three years old. Uh, I listed it for, for that much, but I also put it on Facebook and I asked my friends and people I knew, did anyone, was anyone after a handset? Someone came back. She offered me 200 quid for it. I was really happy with that because it saved the faff of going through posting it off with eBay and worrying about is someone going to sort of say they didn't get it. That's always a risk you get with high value items on eBay. Um, and I didn't have to worry about the fees. And also it meant that my friend was getting a new handset for her daughter. Uh, a fraction of the price that it would have cost to get uh, that same phone brand new or at least the latest model brand new. So it was kind of win-win all round. So there are your four things you can do to sell it. Look at the kind of exchange areas that you can go to uh, from on the high street, whether that's an actual shop or somewhere like CEX. Use a comparison site online to see what places might give you if you post it off. List it on eBay or try and sell it uh, to a friend. Uh, but of course, that final one does come with a risk that if it does uh, give up the ghost uh, a few months after you've sold it to them, you know, well, they might not be too happy about that. Uh, you might feel that you, you know, if you're not sure about your phone and its quality, uh, you know, make sure, you, of course, anything you're doing, make sure you're honest about it on eBay or selling to friends on the quality because you don't want that to cause any problems for you later on. 
Now, how much are we talking? Okay, I gave you an idea what I got for my old phones. Now, as I'm recording this, we are exactly a year since the iPhone XS came out. The brand new iPhone 11 is going to drop uh, in stores any day now. People have pre-ordered it and that means they're going to be selling their old phones. So the prices I'm telling you right now for this iPhone XS or the 10s, I guess more accurately, uh, this could change as more phones uh, flood onto the market. So the time to sell is often just before this happens. But let me give you an idea of what you could be getting if you sold your phone now. That iPhone XS 64 gig in silver, because things like color can make a difference as well. On eBay this week, these are the phones that have sold on eBay this week. I saw it £620 to £720 for a really good condition, but used iPhone XS. One years old, uh, used, but great condition. That's a lot of money. You think how expensive these phones are in the first place. So the depreciation isn't that much, okay? Now let's look at the next step down. And that was going via Compare My Mobile. Again, listed loads of sites. And one of them was GifGaf, okay? You know GifGaf, you'd hope you're gonna get decent customer service from them, you can trust them. It was like the second or third one down. Uh, and it offered was, 565 pounds so you can see it's a big drop down from the ebay price but that ebay price is before any fees were knocked off so the difference you might decide is marginal for the hassle you'd rather just take it in to somewhere like gift gaff but what about cex could they beat it well in this instance no they couldn't an a grade one so remember this is the top level option pristine hope probably 510 pounds in cash at cex or 588 pounds with a voucher. Okay, yeah, that £588 with a voucher is better than the gift gaff offering, but that's a lot of 50p DVDs you're gonna be buying uh, over time. So you'd probably be better off going for that cash option and using that towards your new phone. Remember, you know, these new handsets that come out, they're very expensive, but if you can get 500, 600 quid, 700 quid back, it really reduces that upfront cost you're gonna to have to pay right now. And you should always, almost always, when you're getting a new handset, and selling your old handset, be looking at doing that that brand new phone as this outright on its own and then getting SIM only minutes, data, text, things like that, rather than upgrading a contract. You might find some great deals, but most of the time, you're gonna be better off doing it separately. Big upfront cost, well, there you go. Value this phone before you do it. Work out how much money you're gonna to have to go towards it. I'm Andy Webb, thank you so much for watching. Look at all the links below for more information about all those different things I've spoken about. Head over to becleverwithyourcash.com and also don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and share uh, this video in this channel. Until next time, cheers.